Still running back. He's uh, was <laughs> he retired this year? Okay? He was for the Miami Dolphins. He's one of the leading rushers in the NFL the last couple years. Raise your hand if you know why he retired. Does anybody actually know why he retired? <laughs> he retired so he could go smoke marijuana. I'm not kidding. The guy retired from professional football so that he could go smoke marijuana. He didn't want to deal with the asses of, of passing a drug test or denying himself so that he could make millions of dollars. He wasn't even willing to do it for millions of dollars. He wanted to smoke marijuana. Think about that. How crazy is that? He flushed down the drain every... He flushed down the drain a million dollar contract. I forget how much it was, but it was a lot. Plus it was a long term one. Plus he flushed down any kind of future hope we had of continuing in the NFL, which he was a young running back. And what's more, he flushed down all the friendships that he had with all the teammates on the Miami Dolphins. He's totally disrespected now throughout the entire NFL. And he flushed down the drain his national reputation. All because he wanted to go smoke marijuana. Now think about that. That's ridiculous. I can guarantee you that Ricky Williams one day when he was young, when he was sitting in a high school assembly, didn't say to himself, well, you know, I think one day when I grow up, I just want to be the biggest bonehead in professional sports history. I guarantee you that that did not go through his mind. And I guarantee it's not going through the mind of anybody in here today. Nobody wants to grow up you know, and say, well, you know, if I could just uh, have anything I want, I think I'd like to be a professional alcoholic. <laughs> I mean, nobody thinks that. You don't wake up one day and say, hey, it'd be, man, if I could just grow up someday to, like, be a pothead, oh, man, that'd be great. Nobody thinks that. But listen, substance abuse leads that direction. There's substance abuse, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, none of it can take you anywhere that you want to go. I've got a prime example of <laughs> if you carry that out to the extent where it can take you, where, where it can lead. Uh, last summer, we took some students from here down to San Francisco to work in the inner city with, with homeless people. And there's a whole bunch of people that are down there that have drug problems. Um, outside of the building where we were staying, I was in the inner city in San Francisco in the, in the worst neighborhood. I got up one morning and I was walking out and I was walking up the street to go to this store. And I came across this guy. There's lots of people just hanging out on the street because there's a lot of people that don't have anywhere to go and a lot of people are too uh, high on something to even know where to go. Anyway, this guy was down on all fours on the sidewalk and he had a long fingernail and it was his pinky. And he was taking his pinky like this and he was dragging it through the cracks in the concrete. And I'm thinking in the first place, that's disgusting. And then in the second place, I was thinking to myself, what in the world is going on? And I asked the guy that lives down there with me, what is the deal? And he said, you want to know what he's looking for? He's looking for any spare crystal of crack cocaine that he can find so that he can smoke it. He is so hard up to feed his habit for crack cocaine that he is out there on his hands and knees on the sidewalk dragging his fingernails through the cracks looking for any kind of crystal he can find because all night long the drug dealers are out there dealing drugs, people are on the side of the street smoking crack all night and a whole bunch of other different stuff. But you want to know what's the sickest part? That sidewalk and all the sidewalks down there, even during the daytime but especially at night, you know what they're used for? the public bathroom. People just pee on the sidewalk all night. They don't go to a bathroom. People poop on the sidewalk. If you're walking down there and you'll come across human poop, you know, laying on the sidewalk. And here's this guy. I mean, serious. Substance abuse, you, it, it isn't, it's never going to take you somewhere that you want to go. And I really, really want to encourage you guys to get that through your head. There's no place it can take you that you want to go. So our encouragement through the seven project, again, stop and think. Now I'd like you guys to check out this next uh, video clip. And as we're watching, I want you to be thinking about the upcoming election and about our nation and about who you are and what, what kind of character you have. about, but don't think I even gave it a second thought. But nowadays, 
days, I stand taller, straighter, with a sense of purpose and pride. I think that I can honestly say that I understand a little more now. None of what I have is owed to me. In fact, now I think I deserve less and owe more. Freedom. It's an incredible thing. You either respect it or deface it. freedom, make a free nation honorable. Your deeds, your conduct, paint a portrait that future generations will judge us by. Freedom does have its enemies, the obvious and the not so obvious. Every time we abuse our freedom, slowly we give it away. Mistrust, anger, hate, jealousy, they are the very things that build up walls. Walls that confine us and limit us from expressing ourselves freely. If this doesn't make sense, then look around. Is this the portrait we want to paint? Freedom allows us to make choices about who and what we want to be. That's what it's all about. The freedom to make choices, to choose right from wrong. But with those choices, we have a tremendous responsibility. When those who choose to stand up in the face of adversity and preserve what our nation stands for, justice, opportunity, honor, and pride, it is then the world sees the power of one, what one person can do, what one school can do, what one nation can do. This is the power of one. All right, hey, what I need is, I know there's only probably a few seniors here who are probably old enough, but how many of you in the crowd tonight in that, or in this morning are actually 18? Is anybody here 18 actually? Okay, all right, well there's a few of you. How many of you that are 18 have actually registered to vote? Okay, so a few of you, that's good, that's good. Hey, I really want to encourage you guys, we got the national election coming up. It's a cool thing for you to take your opportunity as a human being, uh, as a citizen of the United States, to take that opportunity and exercise it to vote. I really want to encourage you with that. Also, hey, every single student here, go home, talk to your parents, encourage them to take some time and go vote. And that's because, hey, that's, that's why people are dying in, in Afghanistan and Iraq, so that we have that right to be able to vote. That's why our founding fathers, like Thomas Jefferson, lived and, and breathed and, and wrote the stuff that he wrote. And in fact, he, he wrote one thing about patriotism at one time, and the thing that he wrote about patriotism, he wrote a lot about it, but one thing was, patriotism is not a short and frenzied burst of emotion, but it's a steady and long dedication of a lifetime. He was talking about this issue of character in our life. Now, what's the difference between reputation and character? Hey, your rep is who you think that's a, the mask that you put on that you want people to think that you're all about. It's who you pretend to be. Your character is who you really are. And we really want to encourage you guys through the Seven Project, we need people of good character in this world. Man, this world is dying for people of good character. So let me ask you this while they're blowing up the inflatable. Here's the story. We're going to do a little live example here. There's no right or wrong answer. There's not going to be a test afterwards or anything. But raise your hand if you think lying is wrong. If you think lying is wrong, raise your hand. Okay, all right. So that's, that's probably, I don't know, a majority of us. Okay? Now, here's, here's a check, okay? Raise your hand if you'd be willing to tell a lie to get out of trouble. <laughs> Right? That's a perfect example of character, right? The character is the right thing to do, uh, is not to tell a lie. We believe that, that the importance is to tell the truth. But the reality is, is we're faced with circumstances where we're tempted, you know, it's like, well, what's the story? Should I tell a lie? Should I tell the truth? My parents got me out late last night, whatever. What am I going to say? We want to encourage you guys that having good character is a tough decision. It takes uh, discipline, it takes sacrifice, it takes the willingness in this life to get through this life in spite of the obstacles. It's like setting your eyes on a goal that you want to get to and being willing, no matter what, I'm going to get through there, no matter what the obstacles, I want to get to the other side and, and that's what I want to do. So we're going to give you a little live example of obstacles and the importance of character and making it through the difficult times in life. I need two senior guys that are